Good morning. Uh, welcome to our third Taking Off Our Mass class. It's good to be with you again. Thank you for coming. Uh, let's start with a prayer. And uh, um, if you would, when I finish my statement, um, I'll, I'll raise my hand and you say, we thank you, Lord. Okay? okay? Let's try it. We thank you, Lord. Okay. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women revealing the image of Christ. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. We thank you, Lord. For minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve. We thank, we thank you, Lord. <laughs> For health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering, and faithful in adversity. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord. And for the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right. Uh, today, we're going to change gears a little bit. Um, our other two previous ones have been pretty heavy. Um, and we talked in the other two, we also talked about putting on personas or masks um, that we assumed made us look better. Um, we talked about our religious mask and our, and our good person mask. Um, and uh, in both cases, we, we saw how trying to appear, appear better than we are, it sets us up for a painful reckoning at some point when the messy, unflattering parts of ourselves um, eventually spill out. And now this, this ego-driven desire um, to look good separates us from our true selves and, and from each other. But trying to act better than we, we are is just one way to miss the point, to miss out. Although it sounds kind of counterintuitive, there are moments in our lives I mean, these could be long periods of our lives, not just moments, when we actually choose to strip away any semblance of goodness. And we actually put on our, bad, not bad person mask, but our, our selfish mask. Um, and don a mask that says, not only are we not good, but I, I really am selfish and shallow <laughs> and cynical and uncaring. Basically that we've had it with people. You ever felt like that? You know, I, I remember, you know, it happens early, you know, like when you have your first breakup with a girlfriend or boyfriend, and it's so painful, and you say, I'm never, I'm never going to be vulnerable again. I'm never going to open myself to anybody again. Have you ever done that? It doesn't just happen with, with in romantic things. It can happen with, in friendships, you go, I'm never going to, I'm never going to be friends with anybody like that again. You know, so I'm just out for me, right? I'm just going to look out for me. Look where, look where looking out for other people got me, you know? You ever felt like that? Um, now, why would we wear such an unflattering mask? Um, maybe, you know, like we've been hurt. And it really hurt. <laughs> And so we can't stand the thought of opening ourselves, of being vulnerable and being hurt again. Maybe, you know, we keep people at arm's length because 
just the fear of being known. Um, but the result is we do come off sometimes because of the mask we wear as selfish and uncaring. Um, but what we know, and we've talked about this, is that God doesn't make junk. Um, God created something uniquely wonderful in each one of us. Uh, we are all wonderfully made. Now, we can distort this creation ourselves by trying to improve on what God has made, that is, trying to look good, or we can miss out by putting on a persona that says, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really not good. <laughs> um, which is missing the point by being less than what God made us to be. They're both equally um, sad. Um, today's movie is also a departure in that it is a comedy. It's called... Um, so we're going to lighten up a, a bit. I, I, it's a story about two people who are miserable. It's funny to <laughs> watch other people's misery, right? Um, that makes it a comedy. Um, one, the movie is called About a Boy. Um, how many of anybody seen the movie? Few people, not like the other ones. Okay, in this story, there, there's two main characters. One is named Will, and he's played by Hugh Grant, and he is a wealthy bachelor who doesn't have to work. And he doesn't have to work because his dad wrote a Christmas song that, be, you know, it was something like Santa Comes to Town or something like that. And he has just lived off of the royalties of, the, of his dad's, you know, kind of inane song that he wrote. And that's, that's why he doesn't have to work, but he is a person who gladly wears this selfish person mask. He, he's, he's fine with it. He's, that's who he is. Um, and his self-indulgent lifestyle initially distracts him and insulates him from how unhappy he really is. Okay? Now, the other character, main character, is a awkward um, young teenager um, named Marcus. And where Hugh, the Will, the Hugh Grant character, is good looking and charming, Marcus is not. And Marcus um, has this, it, it lives with a, his single mother, and she is just a mess. She's unstable. She's, she's a mess. Um, and she is consequently a great source of embarrassment. You know how embarrassed we are of our parents being. But this one, this is kind of warranted. Um, this, is, this is pretty extreme. Um, and she's also, because she's un psychologically kind of unstable, she's just, he's, he's the parent almost. He's, he worries about her. Okay, so you got these two characters. But unlike Grant's character, who doesn't really know how miserable he is yet, this boy, he wears his unhappiness and sadness like a cloak wherever he goes. Um, now, before we watch the first scene, um, I want to cite a famous poem that figures uh, prominently in this story. And I'm not going to read the whole poem, but it's a very famous poem, No Man is an Island by John Donne. And this, I'm just going to read you the first stanza. Um, and these are, you know, immortalized words. It says, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Any man's death diminishes me. 
because I am involved in mankind. Therefore, never sin to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Okay, let's watch. That's, that's who these guys are, these two people are. They couldn't be um, less connected. Um, the, um, okay, so the movie, it, uh, the, the Hugh Grant character, he, you thought he couldn't get worse? <laughs> well, he um, figures out that a great place to meet vulnerable women is at single parent support groups. <laughs> now, okay, I know that's horrible, but you, you got to laugh. I mean, it's, it's, it's funny. Uh, so, so that's, <laughs> that's where he goes and starts hanging out. Okay, but do you, do you know what that means? He has to invent a imaginary child, right? And he goes, so, so like he, he does this in different ways. Like he goes and buys a car seat. Um, and he gets like Doritos and crunkles them up in the, in the car seat. So that giving it le legitimacy, this is how far, this is how depraved this guy is. Okay. But see, he, the, um, he, he's working it so hard. He has to have multiple imaginary children and the, just having an imaginary child didn't work. So he needed to have a real child that he could say was his child. <laughs> um, and by a twist of fate, um, he, is, he, he crosses path with, with Marcus. And Marcus um, becomes his imaginary child that he uses for his selfish end. Okay. Now, Marcus, who's never, you know, had a male figure in his life, um, he, you know, he is willing to go along with this because this, the guy, he buys him stuff and does things like that. And he's, he's willing to go along to a point. But, you know, um, one thing that moot. I love movies, you know, and, and I've read a lot about movies and, and, and my son is in film school right now. And one, there are not that many stories out there. I mean, there's the rags to riches. There's the, you know, the, the ugly duckling the, who becomes the swan. I mean, there are all these stories and many movies our takes on stories we've heard a thousand times. But you know why we never tire of going to movies? Because movies really, most movies are about one, one thing, transformation. We never, ever, ever tire of seeing someone changed to something else, something better, right? Think about the movies. You know, actually, um, Star Wars, um, Lucas studied uh, the Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey, which is a collection of all of the stories through history that we've told again and again and again. It's, to write Star Wars. Because he goes, it's clear these stories <laughs> resonate and they have lasting significance. And that's how he wrote Star Wars. Um, 
And so movies are about transformation. So um, the next scene you're going to see is, is kind of the moment. OK, let's watch this. Okay, if I, I know we've all had, you know, those moments where we said, you know, I'm done with people. Um, how'd that work out? <laughs> Not too good. Um, and there's, there's lots of ways we can push people away. So uh, what I'd like for you all to do is at your tables talk about like times where something precipitated you putting on this mask of, you know, I don't need people. I'm fine. Um, thank you very much. Um, and, and, you know, and how, how, how did it work out? What, 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 what brought you back uh, to, to people? to community, to caring. Have at it. <laughs> well, we'll have a little bit more time to talk. I, but, um, you, know, you know, I said, told you earlier that, you know, that he, he didn't know he was miserable. Uh, Will, you know, Will. He, he didn't know how miserable he was. You know, he thought he had the perfect life, that free of responsibility. Free of commitment. Um, but then, you know, he has this, this moment. And, you know, the consequences of his selfishness bring him to his knees. Okay, so, you know, what is an island? What, what's the quality of an island? It's detached. It's isolated. It's alone. And you know, um, isolation is the word that I, I guess that I was after. But you know, we've proven scientifically that isolation kills us. It literally kills us. You know, about those babies that are in Russian or, or who've never been touched. You know, and they get they've never been touched. But that's a that's too dramatic, and I, I would say every one of us has known the um, just the depravity of isolation. For you know whether we're cut off, whatever reason, whether we cut ourselves off, and it usually is us cutting ourselves off. Um, and whether it's because you know we're depressed or we physically unable to do, do things that put you, you know, there's just thousands of things that could, could lead to isolation. To, see, he thinks island living is the bomb. But really, island living is the bomb. <laughs> it is not how we were meant to live. So, um, and, and Marcus, see, Marcus is on to this a little more. And he has this thing, because see, he knows his mom is not reliable. So he says, he has this expression that he usually goes, we all need backup. We all need more people. We, meet, we need a lot of people, he's saying, you know, because, you know, you know, one person isn't, isn't enough. We need backup. So let's watch, let's see how this ends. I guess it goes without saying, Mark, it's terrific. We all need backup. And you know, one of the things that I... That is kind of a throwaway line, kind of at weddings. 
is that there's a moment where you say, will all of you, and this is also said at baptisms too, will all of you witnessing this event do all in your power to support these persons in their vows or in their life? And see, even he says, even, even the, the, the like unit, the family unit is in that. We all need community. We all desperately need each other. Um, now, you know, one of the things that I think about silently when I marry someone is I think, Gosh, I'm getting married, man, you're going to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> because you got married. <laughs> and also at baptisms, you think this little bundle of joy is going to make you happy your whole life? No, no. you're going to suffer because of puts this. But it's worth it, right? It's always worth it to be with other people. So, you know, what I'd like you to leave here with, because we're right at time, is um, whenever we're tempted to put on that persona that says, I don't need anyone. I'm out for myself, you know. Um, gosh. You know, and they, they, it is its own form of death or suicide. It, it, it's isolation. It is, it is, um, it's just not how we were supposed to live. So let's leave here remembering the words of John Bon Jovi. <laughs> no man is an island entire of itself. Every person is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. Any person's death diminishes me because this is the key because I am involved in humankind therefore never sin to know for whom the bell tolls it tolls for thee amen, amen. go in peace to love and serve the Lord oh wait can I say one thing um, next week, our movie is, the movie we're going to use is, is called Goodwill Hunting. And um, it has a lot, of the, I watched this video, okay, it has a lot of profanity in it. And I was, you can buy uh, versions, they cost a lot, where they bleep it all, take it all out. I'm not going to do it. Um, I'm just telling you beforehand, if it's going to bother you, uh, profanity, um, don't come. <laughs> because, okay, this was hilarious. The, the person who wrote the movie, the, the people, uh, I saw Matt Damon who wrote the movie and stars in the movie with, um, with Ben Affleck. And Matt Damon was on a talk show. And the talk show guy said... Gosh, there sure was a lot of cussing in that movie. And, and Matt Damon said, yeah, we, we really didn't realize, you know, but that's just, you know, how it was. And, and after they shot it, the, the studio said, we'd really like to make this a PG movie. <laughs> and and, um, and they, they said, well, what, what would that require? And they said, well, in a PG, you can only have like three really bad words. And, and he said, well, how far are we over? And he goes, um, like 158. <laughs> so if you watch this movie on your own, you're on your own. Uh, I, but it's a really, really, really good movie. It's one of my favorite movies. And I think it really is going to fit our, our, our theme. So you've been warned. Okay. <laughs>